So tonight we will make a little bit of a return to loving kindness and metta. And tonight's talk will be the Chakawati, uh, the discourse on the wheel turner, which we uh, will see summarizes very well what we've seen for the past eight sessions and um, how to some perspectives on what the the role of the four resting places of awareness the four satipatthanas and the role of uh, the brahma viharas uh, loving kindness compassion joy and calm and other perspectives on how to see these things within our own lives and a little story around it which is very wonderful but for now I invite you to simply take a comfortable position and relax any tension that is in your body right now you can take a deep breath and let it all go and smile Whatever is on your mind or was on your mind today, plans for tomorrow, perhaps something that you wish to do or something that happened that has stuck onto your mind, just let it all go and enjoy this moment. If you've done something maybe you're not very proud of or perhaps somebody hurt you emotionally or something that didn't happen the way you thought, just let it go. See it as what it is. Simply another hindrance keeping you away from being happy here and now. And whenever you are ready, you can bring up the feeling of love inside your heart. For you, maybe it's another word, maybe it is goodwill. Maybe it is care. Maybe it is love. Maybe it is loving kindness. The word doesn't actually matter. What matters is that you feel 
this f this feeling of love inside your heart. And allow it to be running its course through your whole body. This warm, bright, radiant feeling, perhaps even tingling. and smile. Whatever happened to you, whatever person did something at some point, or you perhaps, allow yourself to simply let it all go. and forgive whatever situation is causing you problems. Remember that forgiveness is a strength if we do not have forgiveness in the end what do we have Therefore, allow yourself to let everything go and allow yourself to feel love. This truly astounding, wholesome human emotion
every time something arises in your mind or in your body that pulls you out away from metta let it go don't follow it relax smile laugh at the mind whatever hindrance it was it is only a hindrance in the end they're all the same we just let them go we smile and we come back to the love We all make mistakes, and everybody else also does. It doesn't mean that we have to stop loving them. It doesn't mean that we have to stop loving ourselves or having compassion for ourselves. perhaps for you the loving kindness becomes a little steadier as the mind loses its initial coarseness by relaxing releasing the distractions and uplifting the mind by smiling, joy, and metta. And perhaps you might notice that the metta is expansive. It is just everywhere now. In front of you, behind you, to your left and your right, above and below.
when the fire of metta is started after kindling it. As it becomes steadier, it is easier for us to simply allow it to be fully open in all directions unrestricted without a particular person or object in mind but vast and expansive and no need to push this or force this this happens quite naturally when the love starts to stay a little more it's simply making sure that it remains fully open
Tha Kusalena Yang Tang San Tang Padang Abhi Samecha Sakho Uju Cha Suju Cha Suwacho Cha Samudu Anatimani Santu Sakho Cha Subharo Cha Pakicho cha salahu kawuti Santindrio cha nipako cha Apagabho kule suanunugito Nachakudan machare kinche Ye na winyu pare upawa deyum Sukino wa ke mino huntu Sabbe satta bhavan tu sukitatta Ye ke chipana bhutati Tasawa tarawara nawasesa Digawa yewa mahanta Majima rasaka anukatula Dipta wa yewa adipta Yewa dure wa santi avidure Bhuta wa sambhave siwa Sabba satta bhavan tu sukitatta Naparo parang nikubbeta Nati mangita katachina kanchi Biaro sana patigasanya Nanya manya sadukha mitjaya Mata yatani yang putang, ma yusai kaputta manuraki. Ewam pisab bhute su, mana sang bawa ye aparimanang. Metan cesabhalo kasmin. Mana sang bhava ye apari manang Uddhang adho cha tiri ancha Asam badang awe ramasapattang Tittang cha rang nisinno wa Sayano wa yawata sa vigatamiddo Etang sating aditeya Brahma metang vihara midhamahu Dithincha nupagamma silawa dasane na sampanno Kame suvineya gedang Nahi jatu gabbaseya Puna reti This should be displayed by one skilled in goodness, one who walks at peace and is accomplished. That person should be able, straight, and composed. Well spoken, kind, and free from conceit. Content and easy to support. With few duties, living lightly. 
with faculties at peace, clever, unobtrusive, and not greedy amongst the families. not performing anything that the wise would later reprove, wishing may all beings be happy and secure, may all beings be happy at heart, may whichever beings there are, whether frail or strong, without exception, whether they are tall, great, medium, short, rough or delicate, visible or invisible, those who live near or in those who live far away, those who are alive and those about to be. May all beings be happy at heart. Not deceiving others, nor despising anyone anywhere. Doing away with bitterness and retaliation. Not wishing harm for others. just as a mother would protect her only child with her own life. In the same way towards all beings, one develops a boundless heart with boundless love for the entire universe one develops a boundless heart. Above, below, and all around, unrestricted, rid of anger and resentment, while standing, walking, or sitting, even laying down. For as long as one is awake, this awareness should be established. This is said to be Brahma's mode of living. Not grasping to any opinions or judgments. Good in nature and discerning. Giving up sensory gratification. One is headed for the realms of bliss. And on this Metta Sutta, where the Buddha himself is explaining to us how to practice, and how he truly meant this practice of loving-kindness as a very tangible thing, as a very live practice, not only something that we do for 15 minutes after a 10-day retreat, for example, but all the time. both as a sitting meditation practice, but also as a way of living. 
and this will ensure very good things for us. <laughs> and tonight's talk, this was not the talk. This was only a brief passage. I will be reading the Chakawati Sutta, which is also called... Um, oh, someone's microphone is on. Let me your talk. I don't know that. I got it on the Thank you. Okay, good. Good. And uh, I am reading from uh, Maurice Walsh's uh, translation tonight. Um, I have translated the beginning and the end of this sutta, not the main body, which is it is in the long discourses, so it is a fairly uh, um, exhaustive one, but a very wonderful story. And uh, this is the, the this sutta has a few names, but this in the, this version is called Chakawati Sihanada Sutta, which is the lion's roar or the wheel turning kings or monarchs, uh, the Dhammarajas. These kings that were uh, a very famous thing in that the, the Buddha himself imported uh, as a knowledge, uh, which inspired a lot of people, uh, and uh, especially King Ashoka, and the great king of India. And these... Uh, Kings of Dhamma were known to rule the land, the entire earth, basically, only by the Dhamma, by virtue, generosity, and goodness, basically, without stick or sword, without war, without weapons. And their protection was extended to even the animals. And so... This sutta here um, is quite wonderful because it has very uh, many different teachings in it. And it is a lion's roar, like, like it is um, said in the title. It is quite um, affirming a lot of things. And I thought this was a very good sutta to uh, bring everything that we've seen in the past eight sessions uh, that was a concise teaching into a bit of a bigger overview and also how virtue is applied and how uh, certain things work and come into being. And a very important essential aspect of the Buddha's teaching is that we make ourselves as our own islands. Atta-dipa, atta-sarana, our own refuges, with nothing else as a refuge but ourselves and the Dhamma. And the Buddha, this was a very uh, a golden teaching of the Buddha. And here um, he explains it a little bit. Thus have I heard, once the Awakened One was residing in Matula, amongst the Magadhans. There the Awakened One addressed the bhikkhus, saying, Monks, Badhante, the monks replied. The Awakened One said this, Live as islands unto yourselves, monks, as shelters unto yourselves, with no other shelter. Live with the Dhamma as your island, the Dhamma as your shelter, with no other shelter. And how, monks, does a monk live as an island unto himself, as a shelter unto oneself, with no other shelter? with the Dhamma as one's island, the Dhamma as one's shelter, with no other shelter. 
Here monks, a monk meditates aware of body as body, intent fully aware and present, letting go of tension and distraction, aware of sensation as sensation, intent fully aware and present, without tension and distraction, aware of mind as mind, intent fully aware and present, without tension and distraction, aware of Dhamma as Dhamma, intent, fully aware and present, without tension and distraction. This is mental states also. This is how monks, a monk lives as an island unto oneself, a, as a shelter unto oneself with no other shelter, with the Dhamma as one's island with no with the dhamma as one's shelter with no other shelter stay within your own fields monks stay on familiar grounds abiding within your own fields monks abiding on familiar grounds mara will not be able to approach you Mara here, I like to uh, bridge this to a Western, to the Western way of thinking. Mara is all things unwholesome and all things that could cause us problems, basically. Mara will not find support in you. Monks, the accumulation of wholesome states is the cause for merit or goodness to grow. Once monks, there was a wheel-turning monarch named Dalanemi, a righteous monarch of the law of the Dhamma, conqueror of the four quarters, who had established the security of his realm and was possessed of the seven treasures or the seven blessings. These are the wheel blessing, the elephant blessing, the horse blessing, the jewel blessing, the wife blessing, the householder blessing, and the seventh, the counselor blessing. He has more. He dwells having conquered this sea-girt land without stick nor sword by the Dhamma. And here it relates in this version of this sutta, it relates back to a previous sutta which covered more about what Dhamma Rajas, the kings of Dhammas, are and how they do their thing. But here it is um, um, abridged. And after many hundreds and thousands of years, King Dalanemi said to a certain man, My good man, whenever you see that the sacred wheel treasure has slipped from its position, report it to me. Yes, sire, the man replied. And this is a time you will see uh, that the lifespan of people were very long, 80,000 years. And after many hundreds and thousands of years, the man saw that the sacred wheel treasure had slipped from its position. Seeing this, he reported the fact to the king. Then King Dalanemi sent for his eldest son, the crown prince, and said, My son, the sacred wheel treasure has slipped from its position, and I have heard say that when this happens to a wheel-turning monarch, he has not much longer to live. I have had my fill of human pleasures. Now is the time to seek heavenly pleasures. You, my son, take over control of this ocean-bounded land. I will shave off my hair and beard, don the yellow robes, and go forth from the household life into homelessness. And having installed his eldest son in due form as king, 
King Dalhanemi shaved off his hair and beard, donned the yellow robes, and went forth from the household life into homelessness. And seven days later, the royal sage had gone forth. The sacred wheel treasure vanished. Then a certain man came to the anointed Katiya king and said, Sir, you should know that the sacred wheel treasure has disappeared. At this the king was grieved and felt sad, and he went to the royal sage, his father, and told him the news. And the royal sage said to him, My son, you should not grieve nor feel sad at the disappearance of the wheel treasure. The wheel treasure is not a heirloom from your father's. But now, my son, you must turn yourself into an Aryan wheel turner. And then it may come about that if you perform the duties of an Aryan wheel turning monarch on the fast day of the 15th, when you have washed your head and gone up to the veranda on the top of your palace for the fast day, the sacred wheel treasure will appear to you, thousand spoked, complete with fellow hub and all appurtenances. But what, sir, is the duty of an Aryan wheel-turning monarch? It is this, my son, yourself depending on Dhamma, honoring it, revering it, cherishing it, doing homage to it, venerating it, having the Dhamma as your badge and banner, acknowledging the Dhamma as your master, you should establish guard and ward protection according to Dhamma for your own household, your troops, your nobles, your vassals, the Brahmins and householders, town and country folks, ascetics and Brahmins, for beasts and birds. And this is where Ashoka took his inspiration when he was ruling. It was said that his protection went to even the animals. Let no crime prevail in your kingdom, and to those who are in need, give property. And whatever ascetics and Brahmins in your kingdom have renounced the life of sensual infatuation, and are devoted to forbearance and gentleness, each one taming himself, each one calming oneself, and each one striving for the end of discontent. From time to time you should go to them and consult them as to what is wholesome and what is unwholesome, what is blameworthy and what is blameless, what is to be followed and what is not to be followed and what action will in the long run lead to harm and sorrow, and what to welfare and happiness. Having listened to them, you should avoid wrong and do what is good. That, my son, is the duty of an Aryan wheel-turning monarch. Yes, sir said the king, and he performed the duties of an Aryan wheel-turning monarch. And as he did so, on the fast day of the fifteenth, when he had washed his head and gone up to the veranda on top of his palace for the fast day, the sacred wheel treasure appeared to him, thousand-spoked, complete with fellow hub and all appurtenances. Then the king thought, I have heard that when a duly anointed Katiya king sees such a wheel on the fast day of the 15th, he will become a wheel-turning monarch. May I become such a monarch. Then rising from his seat, covering one shoulder with his robe, the king took a gold vessel in his left hand, 
sprinkled the wheel with his right hand and said, May the noble wheel treasure turn, may the noble wheel treasure conquer. The wheel turned to the east, and the king followed it with his fourfold army. And in whatever country the wheel stopped, the king took up residence with his fourfold army. And to those who opposed, who opposed him in the eastern region, they came and said, Come, your majesty, welcome. We are yours, your majesty. Rule us. And the king said, Do not take life. Do not take what is not given. Do not commit sexual misconduct. Do not tell lies. Do not drink st strong drinks. Be moderate in eating. And those who had opposed him in the eastern regions became his subjects. Then the wheel turned south, west, and north. Then the wheel treasure, having conquered the lands from sea to sea, returned to the royal capital and stopped before the king's palace as if as he was trying a case, as if to adorn the royal palace. And a second wheel turning monarch did likewise, and a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth and a seventh king also told the man to see if the wheel had slipped from its position. And seven days after the royal sage had gone forth, the wheel disappeared. Then the man came to the king and said, Sire, you should know that the sacred wheel turn, the wheel treasure has disappeared. And at this the king was grieved and felt sad. But he did not go to the royal sage and ask him about the duties of a wheel-turning monarch. Instead, he ruled the people according to his own ideas. And being so ruled, the people did not prosper so well as they had done under the previous kings who had performed the duties of a wheel-turning monarch. Then the ministers, counselors, treasury officials, guards and doorkeepers, the reciters of the mantras, came to the king and said, Sire, as long as you rule the people according to your own ideas, and differently from the way they were ruled before under previous wheel-turning monarchs, the people do not prosper so well. Sir, there are ministers in your realm, including ourselves, who, has pre who have preserved the knowledge of how a wheel-turning monarch should rule. Ask us, your majesty, and we will tell you. Then the king ordered all the ministers and, and others to come together, and he consulted them. And they explained to him the duties of a wheel-turning monarch. And having listened to them, the king established guard and protection, but he did not give property to the needy. And as a result, poverty became rife. With the spread of poverty, a man took what was not giving, thus committing what was called theft. They arrested him and brought him before the king, saying, Your majesty, this man took what was not given, which we call theft. The king said to him, is it true that you took what was not given, my good man? It is, your majesty. But why? Your majesty, I have nothing to live on. Then the king gave the man some property, saying, With this, my good man, you can keep yourself. Support your mother and father, keep a wife and children, 
carry on a business and make gifts to ascetics and Brahmins which will promote the spiritual welfare, your spiritual welfare, and lead to a happy rebirth with pleasant results in heavenly abodes. Very good, your majesty, replied the man. And exactly the same thing happened with another man. Then people heard that the king was giving away property to those who took what was not given. And they thought, suppose we were to do likewise. And then another man took what was not given, and they brought him before the king. The king asked him why he had done this, and he replied, Your Majesty, I have nothing to live on. Then the king thought, If I give property to everybody who takes what is not given, this theft will increase more and more. I had better make... I had better make an end of him, finish him off once and for all, and cut his head off. So he commanded his men, bind this man's arms tightly behind him with a strong rope, shave his head, head closely, and lead him to the rough sound of a kettle of a drum through the streets and squares and out through the southern gate, and there finish by inflicting the, the capital penalty and cutting off his head. And they did so. Hearing about this, people thought, Now let us get sharp sword made for us, and then we can take from anybody what is not given. We will make an end of them, finish them off once and for all, and cut off their heads. Leading by example here. So having procured sharp, some sharp swords, they launched murderous assaults on villages, towns, and cities, and went in for highway robbery, killing their victims with cutting off their heads. Though from thus from the not giving of property to the needy, prop, poverty became rife. From the growth of poverty, the taking of what was not given increased. From the increase of theft, the use of weapons increased. From the increased use of weapons, the taking of life increased. And from the increase in the taking of life, people's lifespan decreased, their beauty decreased. And as a result of this decrease of lifespan and beauty, the children of those whose lifespan had been 80,000 years lived for only 40,000. And a man of the generation that lived for 40,000 years took what was not given. He was brought before the king who asked him, Is it true that you took what was not given? No, your majesty, he replied, thus telling a deliberate lie. Thus from the not giving of property to the needy, the taking of life increased, and from the taking of life, lying increased. From the increase of lying, people's lifespan decreased, and their beauty decreased. And as a result, the children of those whose lifespan had been 40,000 years lived only 20,000. And a man of the generation that lived for 20,000 years took what was not given. Another man denounced him to the king, saying, Sir, such and such a man has taken what was not given, thus speaking badly of somebody else. Thus from the not giving of property to the needy, the speaking of 
the speaking wrongly of others increased, and in consequence people's lifespan and beauty decreased, and as a result the children of those whose lifespan and had been 20,000 years lived only for 10,000 years. And of the generation that lived for 10,000 years, some were beautiful and some were not so beautiful. And those who were not so beautiful, being envious of those who were beautiful, committed adultery with others' wives and husbands. Thus, from the not giving of property to the needy, sexual misconduct increased and in consequence, people's lifespan decreased and beauty decreased. And as a result, the children of those whose lifespan had been 10,000 years lived for only 5,000. And among the generation whose lifespan was 5,000 years, two things increased, harsh speech and idle chatter in consequence of which people's lifespan and beauty decreased. And as a result, the children of those whose lifespan had been 5,000 years lived some for two and a half and some others for only 2,000 years. And among the generation whose lifespan was two and a half thousand years, covetousness and hatred increased, and in consequence their lifespan and beauty decreased, and as a result their children only lived for 1,000 years. Among the generation whose lifespan was a thousand years, false opinions increased, and as a result Their children only live to 500 years. And among the generation whose lifespan was 500 years, three things increased. Incest, excessive greed, and deviant practices. And as a result, their children only live to be 200 years. And amongst those whose lives lifespan was 200 years, these things increased. Lack of respect for mother and father, for ascetics, monks and brahmins, and for the head of the clan, the head of the family. Thus from the not giving of property to the needy, lack of respect for mother and father, for monks and brahmins, and for the head of the clan increased, and in consequence people's lifespan and beauty decreased, and their children only lived to be 100 years. Monks, a time will come when the children of these people will have a lifespan of only 10 years, and with them girls will be marriable at five years old, and with them these flavors will disappear, ghee, butter, sesame oil, molasses, and salt. Among them, kudrusa grain will be the chief food, just as rice and curry are today. And with them the ten courses of moral conduct will completely disappear. And the ten courses of wrong will prevail exceedingly. For those of a ten-year lifespan, there will be no word for morality. So how can there be anyone who acts in a moral way? Those people who have no respect for mother or father, for monks and brahmins, for the head of the clan, will be the ones who enjoy honor and prestige, just as it is now for the people who show respect to mother and father, for monks and brahmins, for the head of the clan, 
who are praised and honored, so it will be for those who do the opposite. Among those of a ten-year lifespan, no account will be taken of mother or aunt, of mother's sister-in-law, of teacher's wife, or of one's father's wife, or so on. All will be promiscuous in the world like goats and sheep, fowl and pigs, dogs and jackals. Amongst them, fierce enmity will prevail one for another. Fierce hatred, fierce anger, and thoughts of killing, mother against child, child against mother, father against child, child against father, brother against brother, brother against sister, just as the hunter feels hatred for the beast that it stalks. And for those of a ten-year lifespan, there will be a sword interval of seven days, during which they will mistake one another for wild beasts. Sharp swords will appear in their hands, and thinking, there is a wild beast, they will take each other's lives with those swords. But there will be some beings who will think, let us not kill nor be killed by anyone. Let us make for some grassy thickets or jungle recesses, or clumps of trees, for rivers hard to ford, or inaccessible mountains, and live on roots and fruits of the forest. And this they will do for seven days. Then at the end of the seven days they will emerge from their hiding places, and rejoice together of one accord, saying, Good beings! I see that you are alive, and then the thought will occur to those beings. It is only because we became addicted to evil ways that we suffered this lust of our kin. So let us now do good. What good things can we do? Let us abstain from the taking of life. That will be a good practice. And so they will abstain from the taking of life, and having undertaken this good thing, will practice it. And through having undertaken such wholesome things, they will increase in lifespan and beauty, and the children of those whose lifespan was ten years will be twenty. Then it will occur to those beings it is through having taken to wholesome practices that we have increased in lifespan and beauty. So let us perform still more wholesome practices. Let us refrain from taking what is not given, from sexual misconduct, from lying speech, from slander, from harsh speech, from idle chatter, from covetousness, from ill will, from wrong views. Let us abstain from three things, incest, excessive greed, and deviant practices. Let us respect our mothers and fathers, monks and Brahmins, and the head of the clan, and let us persevere in these wholesome actions. And so they will do these things, and on account of this, they will increase in lifespan and in beauty. The children of those whose lifespan is twenty years will live up to forty. Their children will live to be eighty. Their children will live to be a hundred and sixty. Their children to be three hundred and twenty. Their children to be six hundred and forty. The children of those whose lifespan is 640 will, be, will live for 2,000 years. Their children for 4,000 years. Their children for 8,000 years. And their children for 20,000. The children of those whose lifespan is 20,000 years will live up to 40,000 and their children will attain to 80,000 years. 
among the people with an 80,000 year lifespan, girls will become marriable at 500, and such people will know only three kinds of diseases, greed, not eating, and old age. And in the time of those people, this continent of Jambudipa, which was known as India at that time, and more, will be powerful and prosperous, and villages, towns, and cities will be but a cock's flight, one to the next. This Jambudipa, like Awichi, will be as thick with people as the jungle is thick with reeds and rush, rushes. At that time, the Varanasi of today will be a royal city called Ketumati, powerful and prosperous, crowded with people, and well supplied. In Jambudipa, there will be 84,000 cities headed by Ketumati as the royal capital. And in the time of the people with an 80,000 year lifespan, there will arise in the capital city of Ketumati a king called Sanka, a wheel-turning monarch, a righteous monarch of the Dhamma conqueror of the four quarters. And in that time of the people with an 80,000 year lifespan, there will arise in the world a blessed one, a Narahant, fully enlightened Buddha, named Meteya, or in Sanskrit, Maitreya, endowed with wisdom and conduct, a welfare knower of the world, incomparable trainer of men to be trained, teacher of gods and humans, enlightened and blessed, just as I am now. He will thoroughly know by his own direct knowledge and proclaim this universe with its devas and maras and brahmas, its, its monks and brahmins, and this generation with its princes and people, just as I do now. He will teach the Dhamma, lovely in its beginning, lovely in its middle, and lovely in its ending, in the spirit and in the letter, and proclaim, just as I do now, the holy life in its fullness and purity, he will be attended by a company of thousands of monks, just as I am attended by a company of hundreds. Then King Sanka will re-erect the palace once built by King Mahapanada, and having lived in it, will give it up and present it to ascetics and Brahmins, monks and Brahmins, the beggars, the wayfarers, and the destitutes. And this is what Ashoka did when he passed. He actually gave all of his kingdom, which was India, to the Sangha. But his ministers said, no, no, we'll, we're not going to do that. <laughs> he was about to die. So that's where he got this from. Then, shaving off his hair and beard, he will don the yellow robes and go forth from the household life into homelessness under the Supreme Buddha Meteya. Having gone forth, he will remain alone in seclusion, ardent, eager, and resolute. And before long, he will have attained in this very life by his own direct knowledge and resolution that unequal goal of the holy life for the sake of which young men of, and women of good family go forth from the household life into homelessness and will abide therein.
Monks, stay in your own fields. Stay on familiar grounds. Abiding in your own fields, abiding on familiar grounds. You will grow in vitality. You will grow in beauty. And you will grow in happiness. You will grow in wealth. And you will grow in power. And what, monks, is vitality for a monk? Here a monk develops collectedness of mind by way of desire, which is obtained by willful striving. One develops stillness, collectedness of mind by way of enthusiasm, which is obtained by willful striving. One develops collectedness of mind by way of mental development, which is obtained by willful striving. One develops collectedness of mind by way of exploration, which is obtained by willful striving. These are the four um, idipadas, the fourth roads to success or power, mental power. By developing and increasing these four bases of power, a monk may resolve on living for an eon, or for the remaining of one. This is vitality for a monk. And what monk is beauty for a monk? Here a monk is virtuous living in self-mastery, abiding by the Patimukkha, endowed with skillful behavior and seeing danger in the smallest lapse of attention. One undertakes the practice of the training virtues. This is beauty for a monk. And what monks is happiness for a monk? Here, disengaged from outward desires and, de and detached from unwholesome mental states, attended by thinking and imagining, with the blissful happiness born of mental detachment. Understanding and abiding in the... One understands and abides in the first level of meditation. With the calming of thinking and imagining, with inner tranquilization, one's mind becoming unified, without thinking and imagining, with joy and happiness born of mental stillness. One understands and dwells in the second level of meditation. With the stilling of bliss or excitement, one, under, one abides in mental steadiness, present and fully aware experiencing happiness within one's body, that which the righteous awakened ones describe as such steady, steadiness and presence of mind. This is a pleasant abiding. The one understands and abides in the third level of meditation. leaving behind the notions of happiness and unhappiness, with the earlier settling of distractions and excitement, with neither pain nor pleasure, purified by unmoving presence, one understands and abides in the fourth level of meditation. This is happiness for a monk. And what monks is wealth for a monk? Here, a monk meditates with a mind filled with love, pervading one direction, likewise a second, likewise a third, likewise a fourth. So above, below, around, and everywhere, to all living beings in this boundless universe. One meditates with a mind filled with love, vast, expansive, unbounded, without a trace of hatred nor spite. One meditates with a mind filled with compassion. 
One meditates with a mind filled with joy. One meditates with a mind filled with calm. Pervading one direction, likewise a second, likewise a third, likewise a fourth. So above, below, around, and everywhere. To all living beings in this boundless universe. One meditates with a mind filled with poise or calm, vast, expansive, and unbounded, without a trace of hatred nor spite. This is wealth for a monk. And what is power or strength for a monk? Here from the withering away of the mental distractions, a monk is without mental movements, unbinded in mind, unbinded by discernment. One understands and abides having seen the Dhamma by oneself through direct experience and personal realization. This is power for a monk. Monks, I do not see a single other power so hard to overcome as the power of Mara, of unwholesome states. Monks, the accumulation of wholesome states is the cause for merit to grow or goodness. Thus spoke the awakened one, uplifted the monks delighted in his speech. And thus ends this wonderful sutta. This quite thorough story that I thought I would uh, share today. Sometimes it's nice to just hear a story. And filled with many uh, profound teachings. Uh, whether it is on karma, virtue, making sure that we remain islands unto ourselves, that we do not leave this space that we have for ourselves, which are the four resting places of awareness. And that will be our islands, which will keep us from getting... swept away by the flood and make sure that we are protected and we are protecting ourselves and protecting others. I feel like this sutta, the Buddha, uh, explains everything quite well, so I don't feel like I have much to add on to this. But I will open some some time for questions if there are any. Yes, I wanted your. Uh uh, are you available on YouTube? Uh, could you have that too? Yes. Are your talks on, the, on YouTube? Yes, this will, uh, this will probably be uh, posted on, on, on the channel, yes. Okay. And to see your schedule also, we are not getting the information these days, right? Getting in... Maybe I'm not uh, posting it these days, so I don't know. <laughs> oh. Hmm. And your link has changed, so it's uh, your ID, anything ID, that code has changed, so it's because of the other. Uh, yes. <laughs> May I ask from where do you uh, join? I am from Mumbai, India. Uh, wonderful. I mean, 
um, where what platform are you using are you using the website called heart dhamma no i didn't know that's what i'm trying to ask you oh okay 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 thank you yes my pleasure what is the full site heart dhamma dot com yes i might ask someone could someone type it in the chat a person yes, who knows very nice. very good <laughs> or maybe i will after this it's in the chat already okay okay oh good yes good yes yes no, Dante, but... um, I, I, I must uh, tell you that I, yeah, Deva, the one who just spoke, the ID, and yes. mine is from a previous old, old schedule, and that's how she was confused. Okay. I two of my friends who are in this session, previous ID and previous password, but oh. then Terry helped us understand where to find the new ID and the new password so that's settled now okay good yes it is supposed to be updated on the home page of this website heartdhamma.love okay. and when you scroll down it is only it's at the very top uh, you don't need to scroll far it will be uh, there is a that's how I join <laughs> so I just click on the button join the meeting and then I type in the password Dhamma and yes. from that website it there has been some you know there we we do not know always how people have heard about this and there are other places like social medias where this link has been shared in the past. So we, we do not always know uh, where people come, what platform they use. But this is the main one and this will always be updated. Yes. Oh, good. And that is uh, all merits to... Uh, uh, my Kapia Kun, <laughs> the webmaster. All right, no more questions? Good. Oh, and I wanted to say, uh, dear uh, Madhu Sudan, I think. Um, yes, Bante. Last time I spoke, you, you mentioned uh, about the meat industry and uh, I yeah. think I I miss on I think when you said this for me I thought you know the the killing the actual killing but the meat industry after I realized oh maybe you meant the just you know meat that is okay yeah. yes so I just wanted to make sure that uh that was understood I I I only meant someone who would actually do the act of killing that's all i meant okay. yes okay. yes the rest is is not is not killing so okay good very good let us share our merits and then move on 
Dukkha patta chani dukkha Bhaya patta chani bhaya Sukha patta chani sukha Hontu sabbe pipani no Idang no punyang sabbe satta numo dantu Sabba sampati siddhya Aga satta chabhumatta Deva naga mahidika Punyang tang anumo ritva, chirang rakhant buddha sasa sanang. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share these merits that we have thus acquired for the acquisitions of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth Devas and Nagas of mighty powers share these merits of ours. May they long protect the Buddha Sasana. Sadu, sadu, sadu. I sincerely wish you all the best, each of you, for this week that is to come. And it was a pleasure to see you again. And Take good care of yourselves. Do good deeds. Thank you for coming. And have a beautiful week. Yes. Thank you, Vante. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Vante. Sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Vante. Thank you, Vante. Good.